Hey guys and welcome to this edition of our off-road camper build. Now this week I've done some more of the edging on this side and I'll show you in a moment. The rest of it I've got undercoated so I need to do a top coat and let that dry. So I've got a little project for this week but let's first have a look at what I've done on the other side. Now I've put all the edging on this side and I'm just in the process of finishing that off. Uh, this part here is cut and undercoated but as you can see it's come up a treat. I'm just trying to do it slowly and make sure that it's all good. I've got this piece here cut and um, just painting the painting process at the moment. Now onto today's little project. Um, I have these two ARB chairs and they're just a fold up chair, that's one of them. And I've been looking at what to do with them and I could put them inside the cab of the camper, I could put them inside the Jeep, I could put them on the roof of the camper, however I'm thinking about mounting them on top of this and to do that I've got a little bit of checker plate that I'm going to cut out to size, I have some tie downs to bolt to it and I'll just strap these to the tie downs. These bags may not be waterproof, however I can source a waterproof bag for both of them fairly simply. And the reason I'm putting them here is um, it adds a little bit more tongue weight for me because I need that and they're easy to get to um, and they're not going to, if they get dirty or the like, I'm not dirtying up the inside of the camper. I'll run through how quickly weight can add up though on these things. So I've pinched the bathroom scales out of the house. I'll just get them going. Here we go. This is the chair. I'll add to that the rails and I'll add to that the checker plate. And we're up to 6.8 kilos. On top of that, I also have another chair, which is five kilos. So we're basically adding 12 kilos by just getting a mount for two chairs on the top of the fridge box of the camper. You can see how weight just adds up really quickly when you don't think about it. So anyway, I'd need to cut down this checker plate a little bit. I need to prime it and paint it and get it on the camper. So that checker plate and everything else is now painted. It's just drying, so I won't be able to touch that again today. In the meantime, I've bought a set of mud flaps and that just finishes off the front of the camper and um, will stop some of the rubbish that comes off the wheels of the Jeep, um, hitting all the brakes and the suspension components. And I don't think that's a bad thing. So we'll just fit those. It's the next day and I'm really happy with how this has turned out. The um, two-pack satin black looks a treat, so that's hardened up overnight. Um, this will just get fitted on here as such. And I'm going to sicker-flex the bottom of this and then put a rivet on each corner. So we'll get into that. <laughs> this box I'm going to put this adjustable rail however on the rear of the box I don't have enough room to mount this and then open the window the the rail just doesn't work so I've got some other attachment points for the back So 
welcome to day three. <laughs> you can see how these videos just go on and on and on making them, um, apart from the build itself. I uh, ran out of light yesterday. According to my design on the fly philosophy with this, um, I did say I wasn't going to mount the track at the back because I couldn't open the window. However, I wasn't thinking that these things are so easily removable that I can take that off with the straps. So I am going to mount the track at the back because I have it and um, that gives me a lot of options with, with regard to where these hooks go. So we'll mount that. That'll look aesthetically a whole lot better than having another type of fitting at the back and um, get this finished. So that's all sorted now. Really chuffed with how that's worked out. They're not going anywhere. And gets them out of the inside of the camper, the inside of the car, on the roof, and it gets them somewhere where um, they're easy to get at if we stop to have lunch or the like. And just undoing two straps to get your chairs off is a good thing. Some downsides, I don't like the look of them there. And I will get a dry bag that I can fit both chairs in. That'll tidy it up no end, uh, and it'll keep, keep them out of the elements. But for something as bulky as these things, uh, chairs, chairs and tables, I think, are the, the issues when you, you go camping with one of those small campers uh, because it's like, where do you put them? And it's something to look at when you go to buy these campers. And as an aside, this has probably cost about $120, $130 to do this little project. So when you go, you build, look at what you need to package in those campers because it's a real issue and even I'm having some issues with stuff trying to package or when you go to look at a commercial camper it may come in at your price level but it's like well where do I put everything if you're happy to put it all in your motor vehicle uh, that's fine um, but you're either going to pile it all in the inside of the camper on top of your bed or put it on the roof, which is a pain to get to, or any storage in the, the camper will be filled up with a bulky item such as this. So just some, something to keep in mind when you're, you're looking at buying one or you're looking to, to build one. Another thing to keep in mind is that, as I said, this was 12 kilos all up. If you've got a, a tongue box in the front, which is a really common thing nowadays, uh, it'd be really easy to fill it up and put 100, 150 kilos in a tongue box, depending on the heavy stuff and and that's the sort of thing where people generally put tools and the like in a tongue box it is good to have a reasonable amount of ball weight on your vehicle but it'd be really bad to add 100 and 150 kilos of extra ball weight on the vehicle that you don't need to just something to keep in mind with regards to weight distribution and the great idea of having these big boxes on your drawbar i do know a couple that traveled around australia and bought um, a mid-range box trailer and it would have suited their needs except for they put in on a big storage box on the drawbar. The outcome of that was they filled up this box with all their stuff and on a deserted road in the desert the drawbar broke because it had so much weight on it 
and they were left stranded and they just had to leave the trailer there and uh, go into town and try and get a tow back for it. So just things to keep in mind. On the surface these things seem great but they do have bad outcomes sometimes. So with that done, that's probably all I've got time for today. So I hope you enjoyed that guys. Don't forget to like and subscribe because it really helps the channel out and we'll see you next time. Bye now.